Edward Snowden's latest leak reveals how Microsoft has been working with the NSA's PRISM program, handing over contents of Skype users' phone calls. Specifically, Snowden's leaked documents show that in July last year, nine months after Microsoft bought Skype, the NSA boasted that a new capability had tripled the amount of Skype video calls being collected through PRISM. Now, this appears to contradict a very specific message that Microsoft Vice President and General Counsel Brad Smith made earlier this year regarding the privacy protections for Skype users. He noted in a recent blog post, quote, Skype received 4,713 requests from law enforcement. Those requests impacted more than 15,000 accounts or other identifiers, such as PSTN number. Skype produced, get this, no content in response to these requests, but it did provide non-content data. So what does this mean? Well, it means that Microsoft just made the list of top five liars exposed by Edward Snowden. Number four on the list, the British government. Last month, Snowden leaked documents showing rampant spying on foreign diplomats by the British government. It's asserted that, quote, foreign politicians and officials who took part in two G20 summit meetings in London in 2009 had their computers monitored and their phone calls intercepted on the instructions of their British government hosts. Some delegates were tricked into using internet cafes, which had been set up by British intelligence agencies to read their email traffic. Busted. Number three on the list, the Department of Homeland Security. In 2010, Sean McGurk, the head of cybersecurity center at the Department of Homeland Security, testified in front of the Senate on the Stuxnet virus that was crippling Iranian nuclear facilities. He called the virus a game changer. He stressed how the U.S. needs to protect itself against it and said it was still unknown who created Stuxnet as the department's analysis of the code did not point to where it was developed. And then Edward Snowden entered the picture and he promptly revealed that, quote, the NSA and Israel wrote Stuxnet together. So either the NSA kept its involvement with Stuxnet a secret from the Department of Homeland Security or the Department of Homeland Security was lying. Now on to number two on the list, the head honcho of our intelligence agencies himself, Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. You might remember Clapper told the Senate that the NSA was not collecting data on American citizens. But Snowden's very first leak exposed how millions of Verizon users, American citizens, had their data handed over to the NSA. Clapper later apologized for misleading senators. But his lie prompted the President of the United States to react to Snowden's leaks by saying this. This program, by the way, is fully overseen not just by Congress, but by the FISA court. And with that, President Obama became liar number one, since Edward Snowden later revealed that the secret FISA court, which is supposed to be providing oversight, has given the NSA broad authority to collect and store data on American citizens without any sort of warrant whatsoever. In other words, there really is no oversight, as President Obama claims. So you can determine whether his lie was malicious or not. You see, Edward Snowden hasn't just put our intelligence agencies on notice by exposing its unconstitutional mass surveillance operation. He's put liars on notice, too. And in a world of WikiLeaks and emboldened whistleblowers, the liars out there may soon be dealing with something like this. I can't lie! In Washington, Sam Sachs. RT.